Okay, good morning everybody and welcome to this verbaling class. Um, if you've just woken up, it's a great way to start your morning and if you've already been doing something in the day, well, why don't you take a break and come and learn a bit of English in this class. Um, we are going to be talking about idioms. Um, particularly today, what I'm going to try and focus on is idioms that we use a lot in the UK. So these are not necessarily idioms that are only used in the UK, but these are the ones that um, people use really all the time. So the things that my grandparents say, my parents say, and that I have learnt to say too. Um, sometimes it's just useful when you look up something about idioms on the internet there's so much information that it's, it's almost impossible to to know which idioms are actually used and which aren't um, which are important for you to know so that you can converse like a native and which are a bit of a waste of time because nobody says them so in this class what I am going to try and do is teach you some idioms that we actually use and so that you can understand them at least even if you don't decide to use them yourself. So before we get started what we're going to do is our little administration. Um, my name is Amy and in case I didn't already say that I'm a Verbling teacher here with Verbling. Um, I have a Facebook page with Verbling which you can check out um, if you want to find out about classes that are coming up, all classes that have have already happened. Um, if you want to send me an idea for a class, if you want to connect with me in any other way or connect with other students, you can feel free to leave a comment um, or a message um, and I check that frequently. So it's a great place to get in touch. And the other link I want to give you is for um, my Verbling tutoring page. Nope, not that, my Verbling teacher page, sorry. Um, which is a useful one to go to to find out about my classes for one. But also, um, if you're interested in tutoring, you can go and have a look at my schedule. Sometimes students would like a bit of extra tuition, um, just a one-off tutoring class. Or if they want to study something for a bit longer, um, book some classes to focus on something specific about your language. So, as I was saying, um, we're going to be just chatting in this class, so it's a speaking class, but it's also going to increase your knowledge of vocabulary and idioms, which is one of those tricky things to learn in another language without actually going to the country, because out of context, uh, it's quite hard. So we, we're literally just going to look at some idioms this morning, talk about what they mean, um, and when you would use them. So grab a pen and paper because this is the kind of class where you probably will need to write something down. So in, uh, to start off, let's say good morning and we've got, who was here first? I think it was Michael, he raced here. What did I do? You raced. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> to race, A race? To come really fast. Oh, okay. <laughs> I raced there. Yes, you raced here from the other class. It's good to see you back again. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Good to see you too. All right, and Yuki also raced here from the other class. <laughs> I'm second place. I am. Maybe. Pardon? I, 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 I have a second place. Ah, uh, yeah, you Not came first. second. Actually, I think yes. Alberto beat you. I'm sorry about that, Yuki. Uh, you uh, came Alberto third. <laughs> um, yeah, third place is all right. You still got third, the bronze third. medal. Yeah. Um, Good morning, Alberto. You got silver. Hello. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> How are you this morning? Well, 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 I'm fine here. Yeah. Not it's too bad. It's 8 o'clock, then I uh, have it. <laughs> Still asleep. You'll tell yeah. me at 10. Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> all right. Well, it's good to see all of you. Um, this class today, um, I've focused down to idioms that we use in the UK. Um, and I know that when I was learning, well, I'm still learning Spanish, let's face it, um, idioms are one of those things that you have to pick up sort of by listening to how people talk about them and where they're used, and they're really hard to remember quite often because they're unusual language structures or they're strange vocabulary or you just, they don't really make sense in a literal way. So let's see if we can um, learn a few idioms from this class 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to type um, the idioms into the chat box. So let's have a test and make sure the chat box is working. Can everyone see race and test? Yes. Great. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to type in um, half of an idiom. And I want you guys to, some of you might know it already, so we'll see. And if not, we'll learn it and discuss the meaning. Quite a straightforward class. Um, not too difficult. Okay. So let's go with number one. Um, okay. So this is a three-word idiom. You only have to fill in one word. Um, it comes after this. Does anyone know what it is? No. Backward. Very good, Michael. Excellent. <laughs> I wish I Do you know, know what it means? Or no. was that a guess? That was a guess. That was a very good guess. <laughs> All very right. fast. Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little example and see if anyone can guess the meaning, okay? okay. Um, I've given up on her. I've bent over backwards trying to help her and she still doesn't listen. You did what you can at what possibility you have, so. Yes. Yep, that's very nearly close. To bend over backwards doing something means to put absolutely 100% effort in. Mm -hmm. So you absolutely put everything you've got. If you if you help if you bend over backwards to help somebody and and this is the typical context in which we use it, it means you do everything in your power to help them. Um, and normally, <laughs> we only use this expression when it, when you feel your efforts have been futile and you're complaining about it. Okay, make every so, effort, yeah. Yeah, make every effort. Really, um, put everything you've got into it, and not get much, many results back. Normally, okay. So that is really. A very, very common expression that you will no doubt start to notice if you speak to people from the UK. Okay. Well done, Michael. So, uh, Thank you. What is backwards? Um, the word by itself. Yeah, without this term. Backwards is the opposite to forwards. It means to move in a direction that way. Ah, uh, so uh, you forced very hard to back or what? Um, okay, so. So the idiom itself, don't take it literally, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you want to know what the word backwards means, it means to move in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, if you bend over backwards, it means that you... Do you know what bending over is? Mm -mm. Um, okay, let's talk about it bending over forwards. If you drop a pen on the floor, you need to bend over oh, to pick okay. it up. So if you bend over backwards, it's a uh -huh. very uncomfortable position. Uh -huh. You're putting yourself in an uncomfortable position to do something for somebody else. Okay. That's the idea. Okay. 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 It's easily to remember for me when I like uh, split my words and you know, every word uh, the meaning yeah. and kind okay. of I imagine the idea of uh, of these three words. Yeah. Imagery, visual imagery. Okay, I understand. Are oh, you got it in your head now? Sorry. Have you got it in your head, someone bending over backwards? Mm, yes, a lot of people. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Um, okay, this is another one to do with bodies. I just gave you a clue, okay? This is another three-word idiom. You probably know this one. Does anyone know it? Pull summons. Back? Nope. Someone. No. Pull someone's leg or oh. somebody's. Mm -hmm. To pull somebody's leg. Does anyone know what that means? Yeah. Mm. No? Joke? Yes, uh, exactly, Yuki. I to pull I someone's heard, leg. I heard another, another class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are... Um, really, really common. So if, if somebody says, oh, I'm only pulling your leg, it means they're joking, they're teasing you. More than joke, it's it's like teasing. Do you know what teasing is? Yes. Uh -huh. 
Okay, it's something that brothers and sisters do a lot of. Or grandparents often do it to their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. um, so my, my wife will often tease me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Yuki's wife does it. She pulls your leg, Yuki. Uh, she, she pulls my leg, yeah? Yes, exactly. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, all right, that was a so nice, easy one. How yes, would you say uh, uh, I pulled Amy's leg? No, we normally use this in the present continuous verb. So when you're having an actual di dialogue, if you use it in the past, it sounds a bit funny. So um, <laughs> normally if you're joking with somebody and they're like, what? And they take it seriously, then you say, oh, don't worry, I'm only pulling your leg. Oh, okay, pulling your leg. Or you can say, he's pulling your leg. Don't okay. listen to him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's look at this one. I'm giving you a clue. Mm -hmm. This is an animal that we're looking for. Okay, the first part is that. Only Google can help. No <laughs> cheating! <laughs> so, the animal donkey. Yeah, okay, talk the hind legs off a donkey. <laughs> You can probably guess what this one means. What is hind? Hind is back, the back legs. Okay, take the hind legs of a donkey. Take the hind leg. Any guesses? Mm -mm. All right, let me give you a little example. Um, let me see. Okay, I went to visit my grandmother today and we had a cup of tea. My goodness, she can talk the hind legs off a donkey. I was there for two hours and she did not stop. Hang out, hang out, hang out, no? No. Nope, talk very close. much. Yeah, this is like someone who talks and talks and talks and talks and talks and talks and talks forever and ever. Um, so if someone doesn't stop talking, you say they talk. They can talk the hind legs off a donkey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so, only about talking. Or... Yes, only about talking. Do yeah, you know what is idioms by heart? Uh, by heart, or uh, you have uh, written on the on the paper like? Oh, I've got a list of them, Michael, okay. to help me remember. But I but these are idioms that I. My family, everyone I know uses. Okay. So I, d I know what the meanings are, but yes, I have a list because otherwise I forget which ones <laughs> I'm going to tell you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you can be sure that people do use these. <laughs> okay. No, we uh, have here a teacher. He uh, also is from UK, and he mm -hmm. uh, uh, very, very love to, to do idioms, business uh, idioms, idioms, and uh, for example this I never seen in his classes, but I oh, was. Oh really? I, uh, you have to ask him. No, 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 he for sure, he knows, but uh, I don't know why he didn't like show it to us. I guess probably, Michael, there are so many idioms, it just mm, is okay. difficult to, you know, come across them all, unless you go around with the note paper and say, ah, oh, that's what, most of the time um, it's, it's slightly older people who use idioms, I guess. I don't know why that is. It seems like young people have their own little language, and as you get older, you start to use more and more idioms. Trying to teach the younger generation what to do properly about life. That's probably why. All right. Um, so, yes, my grandma could talk the hind legs off a donkey. Um, okay, what about this one? This is another three-word one. The line? Um, no, but that is another idiom which we use cross the line, to cross the line. This is a different one. Cross the line. Uh, okay. Yes, Alberto, you're nearly, nearly right. It's not C, not C. Across. <laughs> Ocean. Across. No. River. Going too big. Smaller, smaller, smaller. Uh, river. No. Lake. Pond. Much oh, smaller. Pond. I never okay. heard of this word. Across the yeah. pond. Um, okay, so this one is, I'm just going to explain it to you because I guess giving an example is a bit pointless. 
Um, across the pond is talking about the Atlantic Ocean. So if you're in the UK and you say across the pond, what you mean is the United States. Um, it's not so. It's one of those things that you'll see it kind of in newspapers or journalism sometimes to uh -huh. refer to the United States without actually saying the United States. It's one of those sort of things. If you say the White House, you mean President Obama, but it's another way of referring to him. So across the pond is the United States if you're in the UK. The pond is, is like the Atlantic Ocean. But if you are in the United States or Canada, it's UK or? Um, I don't or know if they use it as much as us. Yes, if they do use it, it'll be referring to the UK, but I think it's mainly us who uses it. Okay. Is from the historical background. In I have no idea, Yuki. <laughs> uh, Irish people, uh, immigrant, went to America as an immigrant. Mm -hmm. no? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't know if, whether that's where this idiom came from. Might be. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's only about the Atlantic Sea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, it, uh, it's uh, a similar idiom. Yeah. Ah, really? Yeah, charcoal. Yeah. Ah, the puddle across it. the puddle. Yeah. No. Yeah. Ah, uh, you've got even smaller than us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought pond was small. <laughs> yeah. Um, funnily enough, um, because I've lived in New Zealand and Australia and New Zealand are also two English-speaking countries. Um, we say across the ditch over there, across the ditch. That's across the Tasman Sea. So, no idea, but it seems to be popular. This kind of phrase. Um. Okay. Let's do the next one. Um. To be in the, I'm going to give you the first letter because otherwise it's impossible to guess this. <laughs> I think it's still impossible. Does anyone happen to know? Uh -uh. No? no. Okay, it's to be in the wars. Uh. Does anyone know what this means? Conflict? No. No. Yes, it has that kind of idea, Yuki. Okay, let me give you an example. To have injuries. Uh, pardon? To have injuries. To have what? Injuries. Michael? Oh, injuries. Injuries. Exactly, yes, injuries. Um, make Something the bad happens with you. Exactly, to have injuries, exactly. Okay, it's used when someone looks terrible. Like, um, they might have injuries, or they might be really badly dressed or not done their hair, or look as if they've been through some kind of a trauma. Mm -hmm. Then we say they've been in the wars. Yeah. This I heard in uh, classes. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah, for sure. That's... But they didn't remember because only twice, maybe. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe third time lucky, hey, Michael? <laughs> Sure, I'll remember. Um, so this is often used when parents are looking at the state of their children when they come home from playing outside, for example, and they say, oh, you've been in the wars, um, when their children have torn their clothes and got mud all over them or something like that. Okay, um, that one's done. Let me see. Uh, what are we going to do next? Uh, this one's good. Does anyone know what the end of this is? Your tongue. Tongue? No. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> no one know? Give us um, like a guess of uh, that clue. word. Yeah. Give you a clue. Yeah, a clue. Um, okay. A hint. It's a hint. A hint. Is that it's the idea is that uh, of an animal. The word is not an animal, but it's, it's very different to your hint. Tail. At, tail. At nice. The, at no? the end of the... Are you... Uh, not tail. It's a word that means something similar to rope. Tail? No. Mm -mm. You tie. Uh, rope? It's a synonym for rope. Tied. Then or yeah. So an animal is tied up, and it's another word that means rope, but it's... Not quite as common. No. Mm -mm. 
Okay, it's the end of your tether. Mm, never Do you know the word tether? No. A tether is a rope. Is it is a, a a cord or a rope that's tying something up, normally an animal. So if you tether a horse to the fence, you tie the horse to the fence. Okay. So does anyone know what this means? This is one of those ones that's difficult to guess just by looking at it. Um, let me give you an example. Limit, no? Yes, Yuki, very good. Very close. Just guessed. Yeah. Um, so you are very... Um, bankruptcy. Uh, no. Uh, bankruptcy, no? Well, bankruptcy could be an example. It, yeah, but it's not just referring to bankruptcy. In the verge of, in the verge of bank bankruptcy, no? On the verge, no. On the verge of, no? On the verge of, no, Yuki. It's more like you've reached your limit. You've reached yeah. your oh. limit. You can't mm -hmm. stand it any longer. Mm -hmm. You can't cope with it any longer. So maybe you get home and you've had a really bad day and you say, oh, I'm at the end of my tether. And if you're English, you'll say, put the kettle on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you're at the end of your tether, this is so common. Um, it's, it's like you can't cope with anymore, whatever the situation is. You're fed up. You're really fed up. So you definitely need a cup of tea. <laughs> with sugar. <laughs> Not if you're me, just with milk. Okay. Um, all right. What about this one? I bet you've probably heard this before. It's really hard for me to tell because these are all such um, parts of my English-speaking heritage. This is one word that we're looking for. Idiom. Comfort. No. No. No one know? Okay, I'm going to tell you. Cupboard love. Cupboard love. Wow. Yeah. Intimate relationship, no? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> nope. Good try, though, Yuki. Yeah. So, it's... Um... The key word is cupboard. How about key word is cupboard. No, no, not in the not in the sense that you're hiding something. But good try. It's not that sense. It's to do with what you keep in your cupboards, in the kitchen. Uh, maybe. Uh, yeah. No. People who 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 love eat. No. Yes, very good, ah. Yuki. It's getting oh. closer. Yes. Okay, cupboard love is, for example, um, you have a pet, a pet cat, and you give it its dinner, and then it comes to give you a cuddle, and you'll say, ah, oh, it's only cupboard love. You only love oh. me for the food. Okay. So you love, okay. uh, not because you love, but uh, for something. That's no, it. it's only for food, Michael. Oh, food, only for food? Food, Lovely, yeah. lovely idiom. <laughs> yeah. So if your mum cooks you a really yummy meal and you say, oh, I love you so much, mum, she'll say, oh, it's only cupboard love. Okay. Not fridge love, a cupboard love. Not fridge Cup love for some love. reason. <laughs> maybe, this, uh, maybe this idiom came about before fridges, Yuki. Mm. Before fridge, ah, uh, before when, mm -hmm. uh, when, when there is no fridge, there was no fridge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there've always been cupboards for a yes. long time. Yes. All right, so cupboard love is a good one. Um, what one shall we do next? Um, okay, I like this one. To come up, smelling of dot dot dot. Dog? No, I don't know. <laughs> it's, a, it's something that smells pleasant. Pleasant? Mm -hmm. Flower? Coffee? Yes. Fla eh? Rose. Very oh. good. To come up smelling of roses. Rose. Mm. Okay, any ideas what this means? Uh, happy. <laughs> Become nope. happy, no? Mm -mm. 
let me give you a situational example. Um, all is all is all is good. All is well. No. It smells good, but it's bad. Yeah. Yes, that's right, Alberto and both of you. It's referring to somebody who's done something bad, but they don't get caught or people don't realize, and they come up smelling of roses means they look like they've done nothing wrong. They look like they're a great person. Um, nobody can tell that they've done something bad. And it's turned out true. Turned out good. Yeah? Not turned out good. Appear as if they're good, Yuki. Oh. If you come up smelling of roses, you've done something bad. You should have, have paid for it, but you didn't. You managed to get away with it. So normally we use this for example when okay, two people are involved in a situation and one of them gets caught and the other one doesn't and you can say oh and they came up smelling of roses but oh, I had to pay and I had to um, you know pay for all the all the problems that we caused for example mm -hmm. it could be related to, to a situation not only to a person exactly yep and it could be describing any kind of dodgy circumstance, could be illegal, could be something bad, some kind of situation. Yeah. I managed to I managed to come out of relationship with my wife smelling of roses. No? Yes, very good, Yuki. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that means that despite you the fact that you broke up, uh, you still look like the good guy. Yeah. All right, let's do a short one. Um, okay, I'm gonna just give you that. There's one, two, three, four missing letters. On the bar? Oh no, not the barge. The beach. Uh, beach. Bridge? No, but very close. Beach. On the, the bank. Nope. On the bench, that's another idiom that we sometimes use, but it's yeah. not that one. Okay. You know that one, Alberto. Mm -hmm. On the blink, on the blink. Anyone know what on the blink is? Uh, uh, no. At, at the moment, no? Nope. Does anyone know what blinking is, for one thing? Uh, not, not a good. Uh, out of order. No? Yes, yeah. very good, Yuki. It means um, yeah. not working properly. If something's on the blink, it's not working properly. Mm. So it's it's um, yeah. temperamental, perhaps. It sometimes works and it sometimes doesn't work. So mm. we use it for for equipment or machinery. If you say, "Oh, yeah. the TV's on the blink," it means. Uh, our TV is not working properly. We're going to have to do, get it fixed. Or, oh, the fridge is on the blink. It's going to break soon. It's about. It's on the. It's going to on the verge of breaking. Something is always on on the blink in my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right, Yuki. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, perfect one for you, Yuki. You can use that every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> You can say, Every oh, this morning the kettle's on the blink. Oh, the oven's on the blink. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. Indeed. Very good. Um, okay, which one are we going to do next? Let's do this one. I'm just missing out one word. See if anyone has heard this one before. No. To make a song and mm out of something. Give us a hint. A hint is that it's something that you that goes with song. Um, if you have a song playing, you might do this. Dance? Yes. And dance out of something. To make a song and dance out of something. Dance. My dad says this literally three times a week. It's one of his favorite idioms. 
Anyone have any idea what it might mean? There is a plan, but it is not 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 to be accused. No, not to be. No, not really, Yuki. To talk about something too much. Yeah, you're much closer, much closer, Michael. To make a song and dance out of something is to it's the same as to make a mountain out of a molehill, almost. If you make a song and dance out of something, then you go on and on about it and you talk about it loads when it doesn't merit that kind of attention. It doesn't deserve as, as much attention as you're giving it. So imagine something small happens to you, like, I don't know, um, your handbag, you think you lose your handbag and then you find it again. Um, but for 10 minutes you're, you're stressing that your handbag's been stolen and then you ring up all your friends and say, oh I thought my handbag was stolen this morning and then luckily I found it in the kitchen and I thought my cards were gone but no actually it was fine. You're making a song and dance out of it. So there are certain types of people <laughs> I find who like to do this about lots of things. Mm. And my dad does not tolerate them well. So he's often saying, oh, she made a big song and dance out of it. And it was nothing. Okay. Okay, do you understand? Sure. Too much, uh, like, uh, agitation. Yeah. Exactly. Um, all right, this one, because I'm feeling hungry. Which just gave you a clue. A food item that you might consume at this time of day. No, it's too early, actually. A food item you might consume with a cup of tea. Biscuit. No. Very good, Yuki. Your knowledge of English culture is great, Yuki. Well done. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just, just guess. It's not take the full English breakfast. Oh, really? Correct. <laughs> No, 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 it's not. Take the biscuit is correct. But I feel like I could eat a full English breakfast. A biscuit's not really <laughs> much. But what because does it mean? Biscuit is a uh, necessary accompaniment with tea for English people. Absolutely. Yes. Um, I like garment, uh, animation film. Grumit. Grommet, Wallace and Gromit. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Me too. Great he program. always eat uh, biscuit. He, yeah, tea. he actually yes. eats a lot, doesn't he? He also likes Wensleydale cheese, which is a great cheese. Ah, uh, cheese also. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Um, okay, what does take the biscuit mean? I don't know. No? Convince. Sorry, Alberto? Convince, for example. Convince somebody. Convince somebody? No. no. If you convince somebody... He takes the biscuit. <laughs> no. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I can no, see no, what no, you're getting no, at. No. But but take yeah, the yeah, biscuit no. is is um when something is the absolute best, the winner, or has reached the upper limit, it takes the biscuit. So the best of something. Um. <laughs> so if you say are at a horse race and the horse that wins takes the biscuit. It's like the prize. If you win, you're the one who gets the biscuit. It's not a very exciting prize, but there you go. It, it, it's even very English-like, very British-like. I told you it's going to be British idioms, Yuki. Yes. <laughs> uh, best I mean, best. It means the best of best, best of best, yeah? No. It's what, sorry, Yuki? It the means best the best of the best. The best winner. Of best. Yeah, the uh. winner, exactly. Uh, can you look uh, at that link? Uh, for example, it's explaining this idiom, but say, I don't know why they're explaining in different... Take the biscuit. Oh, okay. This is because, um, Michael, that you can... This is a typical situation with idioms. It Because this idiom means the upper limit of something, it could be the absolute worst in the sense that out of all the bad things, this takes the biscuit. This is the worst. It's It's like... The, the absolute limit. So we it's we use it to say the winner, but it could be the winner of bad things mm -hmm. as well as the winner of good things. That's why it explains it as being the absolute worst. 
we often use it, for example, when we're talking about, say, a person's done loads of terrible things, but this time, this thing he's, he's done takes the biscuit. This is really the worst thing he's done. It's like the limit. Mm -hmm. And very strange that this, like, uh, UK and Canada, I mean, um, and they explained uh, on this page only in this way. The, that yeah, the problem is um, that it really depends on <laughs> on the context and who's speaking. But the idea is that it's the, the, the very final point of something, mm -hmm. yeah? Okay. Yeah, uh, because, for example, I pressed uh, to take the cake. Like take the, the cake. Uh, yeah, the same uh, idiom, but U.S. idiom. Yeah, and exactly. The, he is written that to be especially good or outstanding. Mm -hmm. So this kind of sense. Exactly. Yeah. So it's the same sense that something's reached the upper limit. I don't know whether they say. I'm sure that it's the same. If you take the cake, it, it's that you could also be getting the prize for the worst of something as well as the best of something. Okay. Mm -hmm. You took the cake for your results. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it depends on the context. You'll you'll know from the context whether they mean that it's bad or good. But it's the the the, the limit, I guess. Yeah. Um, more about mouths. Okay, that's the clue. Mouse. Mouths. Mouse. Mm -hmm. Mouth. Okay. Mouths. Mouths. Something problems. Mouth's problems? Mouth's problems. <laughs> I'm not giving it away that easily, guys. <laughs> Teeth? No. Yeah. Very good, you, the, you, you. You've got the right body part. Tongue? Tongue no. problems. Teeth? Teeth. Teething problems. Oh, wow. Teething Teeth. problems. Yuki, well done. Great work. Teeth but what does it mean if you have teething problems? It should be with a very yeah. deep meaning. Some more problem. No? Um, small no, problem. No, not no. a small problem. Teething. Do you know what teething is? When children uh, grow teeth and yep. they like uh, start to grow from now and over. Exactly. Disturbing so, problems. Then. Starting problems. Disturbing, disturbing. Yeah. Disturbing. Yeah. Not disturbing. It's actually starting, Alberto. It's ah. like. The problems you have at the beginning of doing something. Yeah. Because it's like when you're a child, you're just at the beginning of your life, yeah? Mm -hmm. So if you're having teething problems... Beginning it's not... stage of problem, yeah? Exactly. Oh, uh, no, it's not the beginning stage of the problem, Yuki. It's no. the problems at the beginning stage of something. Uh. Like, if you start a business, you're going to have teething problems. They're the problems you have to sort of work through before you get going. And you'll mm. overcome them. They're not like a big problem to deal with. There's something that will, because you don't know what you're doing when you first start. You don't know how mm -hmm. to do everything properly. So that's uh, what teething problems are. When you you begin new job, you have a uh, teething problems. Yeah. Exactly. No. Oh, okay. Let's see. So this is like any type of situation. It doesn't have to be a job. Any kind of new endeavor that you start, you're bound to have teething problems. What is endeavor? An endeavor is like um, a project. Uh -huh. okay. Could you write uh, endeavor? E N D E V E R? Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right, so teething problems is a good one. Happens to all of us. Um, okay, let me see which one I'm going to do next. Okay, this is a good one. This describes a person. Only one word is missing. Ah, uh, I know, I know, I can't give any. I'll give you the first letter. Just help you, Yuki. Mm -hmm. So what is uh, starting with this letter? What is that? No, the, no, the very curious, curious, curious people. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. a nosy. Nosy people. Nosy. <laughs> nosy guy. 
<laughs> Nearly. I'll give it to you. It's you, no, it's right. Nosy it's Parker. <laughs> nosy Parker. Wow. Parker. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Why? No, I, I don't know what a Parker is either. It's just a phrase, mm. Yuki. A nosy Parker. Yeah. Always comes together. Nosy Parker means naughty guy? No? Yeah, but it's it's a bit of a nice way of saying Curious it. people. Curious yeah. Person. Too curious. Too Shouldn't, curious. Yeah, it's not curious. It's more like interested in other people's lives when they shouldn't be. So you can just say you're nosy. If you're nosy, it's not very nice. It means you're trying to find out too much information about somebody else's life. In, um, but if you say, oh, yeah, inquisitive. Yeah, but inquisitive has a nice positive connotation, Yuki, uh, and so does curious. More negative but meaning. Yeah? Nosy is negative. Uh, okay. Not seriously, so it's not like a major defect in your personality, but it's not a particularly great thing. So if you say someone's a nosy Parker, you're annoyed with them. Like, keep yourself to yourself, you nosy Parker. Or it's none of your business, <laughs> nosy Parker. I don't like nosy Parker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like them either, Yuki. <laughs> um... Okay, let me see if we can come up with another really British one. Okay, we're looking for a place, a place in the UK. Hell, hell, no? No, nope, it's in the UK. I don't <laughs> think hell is in the UK. London. It might be. London. <laughs> Not to London. Manchester. Nope. Scotland. Mm -mm. <laughs> Big Ben. It's a city, it's a city. <laughs> no one knows, do they? Liverpool. Canterbury's close, yeah. it begins with the right letter. Oh. <laughs> uh. No. It's Coventry. Wow. It's to send oh, someone to Coventry. Have you ever been to Coventry? No. No, I, I never heard. I city. haven't been. Um, okay, I'm gonna. I'm looking up the history of this because obviously this comes from um, some kind of historical thing. It says on Wikipedia to send someone to Coventry yeah. comes from in the Second okay. World War. Yes. Suffer a, a bomb. Yeah. Yeah. There you Third go. World War. Um. So it's from the Second World War. I didn't realize that, but we use it all the time. Um. Do we know? Do you know what it means to send someone to Coventry? I have no idea. So can you type it again? Maybe lost or into the hell. Um, not to hell. It's close. I don't know exactly why. Um, I've typed it, Yuki. I don't know if it's coming up. There I, we go. Ah, uh, now I see. Okay. What it means is to if you send someone to to Coventry, um, you deliberately um ignore them. Um, ostracize them. Um, it's because you blame them for something. So it's a reaction that somebody will have to you doing something wrong. Disapproval. Um, show disapproval. Yes, yeah, show yeah. a lot of disapproval to the point where you don't really contact them and you don't talk to them. But it's about the 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 bombing. Sorry, Alberto. The, the expression, the idiom is uh, because of the bombing. The bombing in um, the Second World War. It, let me just quickly. Yeah. There's, I think there's a several different. Yeah. Um, no, it's talking about industrial disputes. There seems to be lots mm. of reasons for it. If you want to read, if yeah. you want to read up on it, I'll give you the, the Wikipedia link. But the meaning is that you ignore someone. Really? So if you do something wrong to your best friend, I don't know, maybe you steal her boyfriend or something, and then mm. she sends you to Coventry, it means she doesn't talk to you. In in the school. Maybe. Yeah. Now it now it now now sending some sending somebody to Coventry, Coventry become a social problem. It's true. In, in school, social problem in Japan. 
Mm -hmm. Ah, is that right? Yes, yes. Um, it's, yeah, in this sense, Yuki, that's really true. It's quite an immature reaction. It's not really, hmm. um, it's, it's the typical type of thing that young people would do when they're ah, annoyed yes. with their friends. Mm -hmm. It's not like a serious... Yes. Yeah. Sometimes it leads to suicide of young people. That's very sad, but mm. I think it's it's true. Um, so it's not a good thing. Mm. All right. Um, see if we can do a couple more before the end of class. So this one, we're just looking for one word to come to a mm, end. Final. No. But it's, you've got the, the right idea. Uh, let's Begins go. With S. Mm -mm. Begins with S. No one know? No. I can't remember. It's to come to a sticky end. A sticky end. Yeah. Okay, what does to come to a sticky end mean? Bad? It sounds bad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if someone comes to a sticky end, they die in a, in a particularly nasty or horrible way, okay? Um, mm. But it's like a euphemism. So if someone has like a terrible accident or they get murdered or... It's typical of the UK to, to use a really, like, gentle euphemism to describe something really horrendous. So, um, but this one is a little bit jokey, so we'd use it, like, um, talking about a movie or something. If the main character or the bad guy gets his head chopped off or something mm -hmm. horrible, we'd say he comes to a sticky end. Um it can be used to talk about real life in the typical I know, British I know the idiom, sticky, way. sticky business, yeah? Sticky Stick, what? Sticky business. Sticky business, yeah. Mm. But this is slightly different. Mm, different. Mm. All right, so to come to a sticky end, let's hope that none of us have to ever use that word. <laughs> um, and talking of sticks... We'll do another one. Slightly different meaning. What does to up sticks mean? Beat? Hit? No. Actually, no. And it's Don't nothing to do with sticks. It's nothing. I don't know why it's it's got a re uh, why it's related to sticks. To be quite honest. Beef. To, to move somewhere. Yes. Exactly. How did you guess that? Doesn't seem to me to have any link at all. But it means to leave. To leave somewhere. So if you're up sticks, you're going to be moving. Somewhere far away as well. Moving probably abroad. Maybe it's to do with like picking up the sticks of your house or I don't know. Seems strange, doesn't it? Watch the sticks of your house. Like I'm just imagining, Michael, a tent or something. You uh -huh. know how the like the poles of a tent are sort of like sticks. I don't know where this comes from. It'd be interesting to look look it up. But that's a nice easy one. Let's do this one. They use this um, in the U.S. as well, but we use a different word, a bit old, like take the old English, yeah, maybe. Old English, it might be, you can, yeah. Although well, we still use this all the time, so. All right, this one is, wouldn't touch it with a, blah, blah. Anyone heard this one before? Birch ball? Very good, Michael. What does it mean? In the US they say a 10 foot pole, but in England we say, in the UK we say a barge pole. 
so what does if you say I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole, what are you saying? Do we know what a barge pole is? Because that's quite important. <laughs> Do we know what a barge is, first of all? <laughs> barge. Barge, a boat. Know. Yes, Alberto is right. What kind of boat, Alberto? No, no, no. Barge is a kind of ship. Say anything. Oh, was it Yuki? Yes, ship, kind of ship, but it is a flat ship. Yeah? Not a ship, a boat. Boat. Uh, low, low, low boat. Yep, a flat. Flat, flat mm -hmm. bottom, bottom is flat, yeah. Yeah. And where do where do you find these boats, Yuki? Because uh, same uh, kind of uh, kind of same same word in Russian, barja. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Um. In particular, they used in canals. Um. Do we know what a canal is? Yes. yes. Okay. So um, the reason why it's a barge pole is I'm imagining that it's a very, very long pole that you use to push your barge along. Um, sometimes they used to use horses to pull the barge. Um, this is a while ago when they didn't have engines. So the horses would pull the barge along by walking along the towpath along the side of the canal. Or you'd have this really long pole, a bit like... Um, what they have in Venice, not that I've been to Venice, but it's a, what they call it something different. But they push push the boat along with a really long pole um, pushing against the bottom of the ground because the canals aren't very deep. So basically it's referring to a really long pole. So what do you mean if you say, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole? Uh, no idea. Uh, this like. I don't know to join this business. Yeah, it means you, you want to stay a long way away from it. You don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. You wouldn't touch it, even if you were holding the barge pole and the other end is really long, you were far away, you still wouldn't touch it. So, um, something that you definitely don't like, um, that you want to stay far away from, then you wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. I wouldn't touch English with a barge pole. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad, Yuki. Sad. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's true. Um, okay, let's do one more, and I'm gonna give you a good one if I can find one. Um... <laughs> this one is. Okay, I'm just going to get you to try and guess one word in the last few minutes. This is such a, not a very nice image, but it does give across your opinion very well. So, to go down like a cup of cold, hmm. Tea. Nope, much worse than tea. <laughs> cold or Something beer. that you... Nope, sick. something that you... Coffee. Yes, it's sick, it's sick. <laughs> well done, Michael. Something you would never drink. Have you heard this one before, Michael? No. Gosh, well done, you guessed that very well. Sick? Sick is vomit. Wow. Oh, I see. Right, so if something goes down like a cup of cold sick... After, after drinking a vodka, I... <laughs> I feel I vomit. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, this is a, a little bit. I'll explain this one. Obviously, to drink a cup of cold sick is impossible. It's disgusting. So you can't get it to go down your throat. In another expression we use is I idiomatically is something. If something goes down well or goes down badly, do we know what that means? like some news. I told my mum the news, it went down well. What do I mean if I say that? It happened well. Maybe. Yeah, it means she received the news well. She <laughs> agreed with it, she was happy about it. If it goes down badly, bad reaction. So if you tell someone some news, oh, it went down like a cup of cold sick, 
that means there was a really bad reaction. So you have to tell somebody something or you or for example, someone does a performance on the stage which is really embarrassing or stupid or or just very inappropriate, the audience will be like, uh, what on earth is he doing? Then you can say, it went, my performance went down like a cup of cold sick. Nobody liked it, everybody hated it. Or my suggestion, let's go and go on a hot air balloon ride. No one wants to go. Everyone thinks, what, you're crazy. Then your idea went down like a cup of cold sick. So that one's only used in extreme circumstances. All right. So everybody, um, you can go off now for the rest of your day and try and use all of these idioms. See I how wish you remember into. some of them. You will, Michael, eventually. You will. <laughs> um, at least if you start listening to, I don't know, idiomatic, in, not the BBC. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they're likely to say, yes, the news, Obama took the news like a cup of cold sick. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but um, if you listen to some blogs or YouTube videos, maybe you'll hear these. I'm sure you will hear them. If you watch a soap opera, you definitely will hear them. So take your pick. There's plenty of wonderful British soap operas to watch out there. But in America, for example, in the US, uh, they, um, uh, so I read, the, for example, articles uh, and I watch TV and they, they like very, very much to, to speak with the uh, idioms. They use a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Their idioms, not uh, British, but, but there. So it's kind of, uh, I think it's very useful, like, to pick up these idioms to... Uh, yes, I understand the meaning of the article because it's like, it's pretty straightforward, like uh, how they write. But uh, I would like to kind of use them in conversation as they. Do. Yeah, well, slowly does it. Slowly does it. What does that mean? Little by little. Okay. One at a time. But you have a, a lot of idioms in in English, more than yeah. in Spanish, for example, no? We have millions, Alberto, but, yeah. but these are the ones that I've given you today and I guess the ones that um, the other British teachers give you are the ones that we actually use because there are a lot of kind of antiquated ones that nobody's ever heard yeah, of. Yeah. I've seen yeah. English textbooks which have lists of idioms that I don't, have never heard in my life and it's just a pointless waste of time. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, what? Not even my grandma says that. <laughs> So these ones you will definitely hear and you can use them and you will be understood if you would like to. <laughs> and will be misunderstood. <laughs> I mean you will say Probably. and they will not understood the context is say what? Yeah, exactly. What the heck? <laughs> but yeah, all, you might all, all, the, all the languages have idioms but but the English language is uh, the most yeah. I don't know to be honest Alberto. Yeah. No, but you you can speak Spanish. Then in Spanish there are idioms, but but not the uh, show that in the not English. as many. Yeah, maybe true. Yeah. Maybe true. Sorry yeah. about that. There's thousands of them. <laughs> yes, that is true. That is true. But um, one at a time. I mean, you can still speak English without using them, but it does add a bit of color and it helps you understand what other people are saying. No, yeah, it's better to not, use them. Not, all, not all English has many idioms. In other, in other languages, though, there are uh -huh. many, many idioms. Of course, oh, well. <laughs> there, are, there, there are a lot of idioms in Russian. So mm -hmm. I, I, am, I get accustomed. <laughs> all right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. I um, hope you've learned something today. I'm going to end the class, and I'm going to go straight to another one. So I will see you all again soon. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Take bye. care. Bye.